What's up everybody, the Destroyer here, and welcome back to another cast of the Rise of the Witch King, patch 2.02 version 5.0.1. Today we have a 2v2 on Buckland. So, let's get involved, shall we? We have our first player, Wolfie 2, as Engmar in the bottom left. In the bottom right, we have Rogue Bionicle, I believe, is his full name, as the man of the West. We have the opposing team, Swayboy, hashtag QT. <laughs> Goblins, and then we have his ally, engineers, dwarves. All right, so we got a dwarf, goblin versus Angmar and men of the west. Cool. All right, so let's see. We got Bionicle going for a uh, barrack start. He's not going for cavalry or anything exciting like that. We of course got a hall of warriors start, as you would expect from engineer. Getting three tunnels in his base or mine shaft rather. To start, looks like we have Swiboy. He's also Mod. Or Mod, however the hell you say his name. But he'll be going for that. He's got a goblin cave, of course. Gonna get some goblins out. Throw them to their death, undoubtedly. And this player is who again? Wolfie. Wolfie is going for us all the king's men and thralls. Will he go for this? Yes indeed. We have goblin warriors heading for this. Probably to take it, not to destroy it, I would imagine. Since he's going to be the first one there. If he doesn't see any enemies, he might as well grab it. So he can benefit from the resources. If an enemy shows up, obviously... Oh, he's actually going to knock it down. Well, fair enough. That does take that out of the equation. Goblins, of course, have very cheap units, so it's not going to hit him too bad. Engineer cancels his mind shaft there. In retaliation to these Gondor soldiers with Rally Call. And they'll be moving into his base. Does he have Dwarven Guardians ready? He's building Phalanxes. That is the wrong unit to build, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm guessing he doesn't know the Men of the West wasn't going Cavalry, but still. Definitely Phalanx is not going to be very useful against those. He does have Guardians, though, so it seems he'll be all right. Does he have Rally Call? How did I start? I don't know. I started observing somebody somehow. Looks like we got everybody having Rally Call or War Chant, respectively. Engmar sending some troops into the Dwarven base now. But we have, uh, of course, K-Bats for Swiboy. The Swigmaster himself. Looks like Engmar does defend his mill there. Pretty nice. So Wolfie will continue to sit on, what is it, four? Four mills for now? Looks like it. Not too bad. Four mills and then two uh, Halls of King's Men. It's a pretty good start. That should help him keep up with the goblins. Looks like Mod is throwing down a, another goblin cave, so he'll have three pumping out goblins. Pretty much all times. Oh, it looks like a builder was taken down. Deadly Dwarven. All I saw was the remnants. But I would guess there was not a Men of the West builder in the Dwarven base. <laughs> that seems silly as hell. It looks like he does manage to save his farm there. This one probably not. Eh, maybe. Eh, Bionicle might save it. It's going to be damn close. Nope, he won't save it. Oh, shit. I take it back. Look at that. He saved it. In come the dwarves, though. Engineer throwing down his rally call. Well, it looks like Engmar is pushing out here. Boy is going to be attacked on the right side pretty heavily. He's got a lot of goblins, though. He'll be all right, I think. But he will definitely lose this tunnel, I would imagine. For sure. Oh, he's actually going to be attacked down here as well. Very nice job splitting up his armies. You always want to try and split up your armies if you can. You never want to have all your guys in one spot. It's good practice in pretty much any RTS, I guess. Kind of. But Wolfie's attack, double pronged attack, pretty good. It looks like the dwarves will be cleaned up here. And Bionicle should be safe to start to building and sending troops out, I think. Probably gonna go for a counter attack, I would imagine. And Maud, with the help of his ally, no less, 
over here with a battle wagon, which is incredibly useful against Ingmar's uh, soldier spam, as long as they're not spamming pikes. If he's careful enough, he can do pretty good damage. Of course, if he kites well, this will just auto-target these guys and kill them fairly effectively. <laughs> that was unnecessary. But, look at that. Easily taking down the Gundabad Warrior Battalion. Good micro there. Keeping his battle wagon alive. Gotta be very careful, especially with the delay the game has currently. And has had for the dawn of time. <laughs> then, of course, you have to account for lag, etc. But it definitely pays to be host, of course. Host has a, a lot less lag and delay. Because their host. Host advantage is real. I believe it or not. And there we go. Angmar has cleaned up his stuff there. And then he'll begin sending guys out again. Oh. Manalus managed to get that battle wagon, it looks like. And now he has a fairly sizable force heading for Mod's base. Hopefully, Engineer has some forces to send to his aid. Looks like Mod's actually attacking the base of Bionicle right now. Soy Boy is showing there is a stable there to his ally. So definitely going to need to be ready with some phalanxes, at least one battalion of phalanxes. And in comes Bionicle actually attacking both players. Very nice. Splitting his forces, like I was just saying. He'll keep the goblins at bay here for now, while Wolfie moves into the south over here. And begins harassing the back of his base as well. Mod is sitting on four of these caves. Continue to get spam, which is always good. He's gonna need them. To fend off these two players. Being doubled is always a bitch, let me tell you. And the dwarves are nowhere in sight, of course, because they are quite busy actually fighting Bionicle over here. He's sending a battle wagon, though, with an axe upgrade on it. The thing about the Axors is they come with the upgraded Forged Blades, it looks like. I'm assuming. It certainly looks that way. And immediately, two of the caves are taken out. Was it, or was that a cave in a tunnel? I forget. Either way, damage has been done to Swoboy's base. So that's not good. And he's going to lose his cave as well. And that cave. Oh no, he's probably going to save his cave. I'm thinking. I think the battle wagon has arrived because he's taking massive damage. He is rebuilding though. So he's not sitting idly by while his base gets destroyed, which is good. Because that would be dumb. <laughs> and nobody wants to be dumb. Oh boy. We got three battalions of dwarves just chilling out in Bionicle's front door there. And while a goblin battalion moving into the south, that's going to be easily dealt with by the Rohirrim. Rohirrim are monsters against one battalion of swordsmen. If there's a lot of goblins there, it would be not as effective, of course, because they slow down once they start trampling. But Rohirrim have pretty good trample, so they do a lot better than, say, like Gunner Knights or something. Who slow down immensely when they trample. Or Warg Riders. God, Warg Riders are the worst. I'd imagine Wolf Riders are even worse, though. I fucking hate Warg Riders, though. Playing with those cavalry units are just terrible. <laughs> when you play with a, a Rohirrim unit, you move it around and then you move around a wolf rider in your, like, oh, or org rider rather. You notice the difference, let me tell you. It's it's huge. The dwarf's going for a medium sized attack here. It's the same army that was there before, but it looks like there's more than enough men of the West guys here from Bionicle to stop Engineer's attack. Oh, battle wagon getting I think it was fell winded. Sounds like it. Right into the pikemen, very nice. I wasn't aware you could fell wind uh, battle wings until recently. Which will be, I don't know how recent when this cast goes out, but who knows. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. I thought bigger units were immune to it, so I figured battle wagons were uh, not affected. Of course, I, I don't know what gave me that idea. Who knows? There's a well here. Of course, if you're ever going cavalry, I say this pretty much every match that the player has cavalry, you want to get a well. Heal up your shit. 
because these are expensive units and they can just come home, heal up, go back out, do some damage, come home, heal up, just repeat, rinse and repeat. Very effective. Looks like we have a sob... a sobbit humming. <laughs> uh, right. Hobbit summon. I prefer they were called sobbits though. Sounds funny. We'll get a white summon here. Very nice. Let's take a look at powers and stuff while we're at it. Dwarf player engineer here while he's under attack. He might just be able to save his mind shaft. The white, unfortunately, isn't attacking. If the white was attacking, he'd probably destroy this. That's unfortunate. Ooh, looks like engineer actually has a prince brand. Anyway, he has hobbit allies, rally call, three power points, and 232 of 400 command points used. It looks like he has a small goblin attack at his base, but there is Angmar troops here to defend him. Wait, what? Angmar troops. Uh, oh yeah, goblins are on the top. <laughs> Had a brain fart there for a second. I was thinking goblins are in the bottom, so I was like, why are they fighting each other? Duh. Who am I observing here? The Man of the West and Dudley. Bionicle has heal, rally call, 8 power points, 440 of 500 command points. So he's got more command point limits. Soy Boy, 200 to 450. He's got his K Bats, of course, 10 land, as you see there, and 8 power points. And then we got 575, 282 to 575 for Angmar player Wolfie. He's got Summon Whites, Felwind, and Warchant, 4 power points. So he's actually ahead in the power point game and the economy game, it looks like. Mod space being ravaged once again. Rehiram, of course, is going to be hard to stop. Now getting great triples over and over again. The more battalions you have, the easier it is to trample, of course. Down goes the rally call. Or war chant, rather. On all them Rohirrims. And they'll get out, go heal up, and do it again, probably. Meanwhile, Engineer sending more guys to their death against the men of the West. <laughs> Engineers' attacks unfortunately aren't having too much effect against the men of the West attacks, or defense rather. Of course, Tom Bombadil is not helping matters. We have a Tom Bombadil from Engineer uh, Bionicle there. These right here need to be a little bit careful. He almost ran through some phalanx there. Oh, those ones did. They didn't attack. Missed opportunity, I'm afraid. The battle wagon's actually targeting down the uh, battalion. They do get killed. He might be sacrificing this battalion to take down a farm. I don't know if that's worth it. Oh, that was a terrible play by a uncle. <laughs> Unfortunately, losing control of his horses. Right into some pikes there. Unfortunate. Meanwhile, Swoboy attacking in the bottom left, or bottom right rather, taking up the left side farm. Getting all confused. Too many directions. Wolfie spamming thralls once again. Needs to make sure these guys summon things. There you go. Very nice. He has a very large army of orcs. He has a couple of battalions of pikes as well. Three battalions effects. And Mod is still a bit damaged, but he's pretty much functional, I'd say. Four goblin caves is more than enough, and he also has a lumber mill as well as a few. Like four or so tunnels, five maybe. So that'll keep his economy going for a while, especially when his, his warriors are cheap. But he won't be able to upgrade for a while, I'm thinking. He's also got a defensive tower, which is useful as well. Especially against the spam units, they die fairly quickly to those quick shooting unupgraded towers. Battle wagon's so good for defense, as long as they're not being attacked by pikes. But even then, he could sit there with this Men of Dale upgrade on the back. As you see, it actually one shots these guys. And there's two archers on it. If they actually start targeting on the Thrall, it'd be even better. Because they can kill it fairly quick and kill all of them, which is always handy. Looks like Ingmar did get rid of the lumber mill in the back here of Goblin's base. So that's unfortunate for him. There's a lot of spam going on. <laughs> it's got to be said. But I'd expect nothing less. And he's a battalion, there he goes. Very nice. That's something I always struggle with. 
forgetting or remembering to actually give my thralls stuff. I have sent many a thrall to their death without giving them any soldiers to defend them. It looks like engineers going for an attack on the fort. This is definitely not the best move, but at the same time, he's being completely unopposed by the men of the west. Of course, he's going to try to get rid of this battle wagon, which is a good good call, I'd say. If he can get rid of it with that Rohirrim, it's definitely worth it. He's got to be very careful, though. He's going to run right into the pikes. Oh, he managed to just turn around just in the nick of time. And these Phalanx is realizing they're not going to actually take down an entire fort by themselves. It's going to move away. Also, it looks like Faramir has arrived to help to deal with that. And while we have an attack on Swoboy's base, down goes a barrage. Very nice. Looks like Dwarves helping out his ally on the left side here. This barrage actually managed to get rid of one of the Hall of the King's men, almost getting rid of the second one. This battalion goes in and sneezes on it, he'll get rid of that. And that'll be a nice pickup for them. And that will slow Wolfie down immensely. If he has to build a mill as well. Hopefully he doesn't lose this level 3 mill. Level 3 mills are pretty crucial late game. You do not want to lose those if you can avoid it. Definitely. He has a wall there now though. So Wolfie's got something going for him. He's going to be careful. If you throw him into a few battalions of goblins, he will disappear very quickly. With their poison blades and usually some sort of buff. They do massive amount of damage. We've got tower guards out in the field now for Bionicle. Of course, the upgraded pikemen. Very nice. I do like a good tower guard. They're quite... quite saucy. Looks like Wolfie is rebuilding his Hall of Kings men. This one should start rebuilding if no one's going to attack it. So that's going to be a bit unfortunate for him. There's Prince Bran just chilling out there with a battalion of phalanxes. Waiting for his ally, undoubtedly, who's got spiderlings now. Very quick, agile, and decent for killing farm buildings. And of course, they'll help with the Rohirrim a little bit because they can't be trampled and they're quick. Of course, they'll never defeat the Rohirrim in a 1v1, though. So that's something to keep in mind. In comes the Rohirrim, though. Fairmere using his wounded arrow. That really terrible, shitty attack. It's still worth using, but I mean, it's it's no slam shot, let's be honest. He is no Prince Brand. And it looks like the majority of Goblin's army has been cleaned up, as the dwarves have as well. Or here, or just cleaning up the spider riders pretty easily. Spiderlings, I mean. Meanwhile, Wolfie has a lot of his army over here, engaging the dwarves. But it looks like his base is about to be attacked by hordes of goblins from Mod, and that's going to end in a lot of things going poof, I think. Mod's making good decisions here, targeting down all the economy buildings of his opponent. Angmar's economy is already bad, so if you can shut it down even more, you can really, really hurt Angmar. It looks like majority of... well, he's actually going to lose all of them, I think. If he gets this battalion on there, this is definitely going to take out every mill that Wolfie has. And that's going to shut Wolfie's economy down entirely. Except for the fortress money, of course. So that's not good for Wolfie, definitely. His ally, Bionicle, is going to have to save him. Get him out of that one, definitely. Quick, quick, and quick. <laughs> Looks like he's starting to rebuild now. There's the ring. Golem running around with it. He could, uh... Could come into play at some point, depending on how long this game goes. Definitely not on Angmar's economy, though. I don't see that ring hero being very useful. Nice trample there by the Rohirrim, of course. I gotta love some Rohirrim. So good. Bionicle needs more guys, though. Let's see if he's getting more Rohirrim on the field. And he's got Faramir pushing forward against the dwarves here. And there's some whites from Wolfie as well. That'll help clean up some of those dwarves. Engineer's gonna lose the majority of his army, I think. Engineer does have Men of Dale. But, I mean... They're... <laughs> not gonna be that good by themselves. Turns out... And especially against Rohirrim. Oh my god, they're just gonna die. 
Eaten alive. Looks like Swill Boy has gone for Half Troll Marauders and Half Troll Swordsman. Very nice choice. They, of course, won't be really affected by the Rohirrim. And they're very strong units as well. So that's good. Oh, shit. We got the Dunedain Summon. It's a rally call. That's going to do some pretty good damage. That will tear Goblin's army to pieces. We do have Waldar here as well. I'm trying to click on him there. He's up to level 3 now. Once he gets to level 5, he can summon some Hillmen, which is always fun. It looks like Wolfie has recovered a bit. It's only temporary, I'm afraid. <laughs> Down goes one of us all the King's Men to the Worm Summon from Maud. So that's going to do some pretty good damage. But the Men of the West have a fairly decent army here. Especially with the Dunedain Archers in tow. Prince Brand is going to try and lead the charge here against the defense. Dwarves do not have much, though. He's working on it. Might need a battle wagon, though. If he's careful enough, he can get rid of a lot of these. But it looks like Commander West and Angmar are working closely together to try and attack the dwarves here. And of course, Maud is going to react by saving his ally or attacking his opponent. Looks like he's going to save his ally. It's probably the smart move to do, I would imagine. Oh, the Rohirrim going to get Prince Brand. He's taking flanking damage, and he dies. That sucks. Definitely worth losing a few Rohirrim. They can go back and heal up, but losing a hero is always tough for the recipient, as you would expect. Goblins do have a fairly sizable army, and a long shot would be brutal. He could at least get a nice run through on the Goblin Archers, and he does indeed. Not as nice as you would expect, though. He goes more for the main line, I guess. Which is fair enough. Nice attacks, though. Looks like down in the south we do have, actually, Swoboy going for an attack here. On Bionicle's base. He's going to lose his builder. And down he goes. Unfortunate. Wolfie sent some Angmar troops to assist over there. These guys are going home to heal. And as is Waldar, he has reached level 5, so he has summoned his Hillman. I think the dwarves will be able to clean up this goblin. The remnants, uh, not the remnants of the goblins, the remnants of Angmar there. With the goblins. Assistance. Right, let's take a look at powers and such now. We have, of course, engineer dwarves having barrage. He's at six power points. He's at three and two, four fifty at the moment. Men of the West has, of course, two nine allies. He's up to twelve power points. He's got a Tom Bombadil, of course. Three nine five, five twenty-five. Goblin player, Swim Boy has his Worm. He's got Wildman Summon, seven power points. He's at three hundred seven fifty. So he's doing very well on economy. And we have Orcs, Whites, Felwind, Snowblind, all that shit. 7 power points and 236 and 450. So Goblin's definitely ahead in the economy race. Is he telling them to attack this? I wouldn't do that with Rohirrim. Rohirrim aren't very good against trolls, <laughs> it turns out. Their one weakness. I guess he was assuming that because he's using half or cave trolls, he was getting it from here. That's a fair assumption, but no, he can build them from the fissure, of course. Because he's goblins. But Untamed Allegiance is always a worry. you got to keep that in mind. We do have a car shot in the field, which is great against goblins, of course. Fantastic against goblin warriors. They just melt away in his presence. So if he can keep him, uh, keep him around them, they'll do well. But you got to be careful, of course. Being in the middle of a bajillion goblins is never a safe thing, even if you are Karsh. you got to be a little careful. We do have a Boromir out in the field for Bionicle. He's trampling a lot of goblins. Look at all these men of Dale. Holy crap. And we got a wild one summoned. That should do pretty good damage. Oh, with the fell wind combo. Very nice. Giving him a lot of time to kill as many guys as they can. Although hobbits were summoned. And Frodo using his vile Galadriel to try and cause fear into the ranks. Not sure if it worked or not. To be honest. They didn't run. But I, they did look like they stopped attacking at least. It looks like the dwarves were pretty much mopped up there. Unfortunate loss for them on that battle. 
Coven's going once again for a big, not really a big attack, but a few smaller attacks on the goblins. On Angmar, <laughs> of course. That's what I meant. These half drum marauders do great damage against structures. So something you gotta watch out for. And of course, Mod is targeting down all the mills that he can. Mod has such a big economic advantage against his opponent, Angmar. He's doing a great job of shutting him down the best that he can and then just out spamming what he has. And there you go, there's Karsh's ability just standing there melting all those goblins. Look at that. It's disgusting. He should be ashamed of himself for how sexy he is. And there he goes. Goblin army is defeated. <laughs> Well, wave one of m millions. Tom Bobbin will be summoned in, of course. He'll help out with the uh, the attack for the men of the West. We're here I'm going in once again. They should be able to get a good charge off. Be careful. Oh, down goes the uh, Blight. Blight is always brutal against goblins. Especially when you put it around their production buildings. These guys are going to come out and probably die to poison. These ones will. Because by the time they get out there, they're almost already dead. They will stop turning into whites after 10 seconds, though. It's the poison, though, I have to worry about after that. Ooh, we got mini fire, mini fire drake broods. Very nice. Goblins are in a little bit of trouble, but I think they'll be okay. Once these whites just spawn, you should be able to recover, I think. Maybe. I guess that really depends on how, uh, how much it sends over here. Mod's actually using Burroughs expansions to keep his command point limit up. Maybe that's why his economy his economy wasn't super better. But yeah, because of the command point limit, he was using uh, Burroughs expansions to increase his command point limit. But it's still, his economy is probably doing better. He's got lumber mills, he's got tunnels. He's not really losing as many as Angmar has been, I would say. We got Blight, of course, from Wolfie. That's his newest power. Bionicle has nothing new, but he is up to 20. He's getting close to his 25. He should get that pretty shortly, actually. Dwarves do have Barrage ready to be used. And uh, Goblins, 10, so he's not anywhere near it. So, curiously enough, the first player to get a 25 will be the Men of the West. It's usually the Goblins, but not this day. Not this day. Prince Brand and a few battalions of dwarves going for an attack. I don't think it's going to be enough to take out the men of the west by any means. But it'll do a bit of damage. We have Faramir and Boromir, the two brothers, out for defense of the men of the west. Fire Drake Brood's getting away there. Very nice. So he's going to bring him back in. Get rid of some of these rangers, probably. These X Thors and stuff. From the flank. Very nice. Ooh, that's gonna suck. Wolfie using a fell wind to take out those fire drake broods very nicely. Oh, if this one lives, he could level it up and then keep it going. He's gotta be careful here. Yeah. Of course, just turn around and kill it if you wanted to. Looks like he's opting to run away instead. It's not a bad idea. Oh shit. There goes the earthquake on Swo Boy's base. That's gonna shut him down a bit, but. Fortunately, his fissure is level 3. It did survive. This goblin cave also survived. Be on the out, outer rim of it, but everything over here is gone. Apparently, King Dane is dying somewhere. I'm not sure where. There he is. We have a beacon here. I think he's showing he needs a hearth, which is fair. Dwarves do not have a hearth down, which is a bit curious. You always want to try to have a hearth in either your allies or your base, or both. <laughs> Especially if your ally does not have his own. You need to build him one just to keep your guys uh, healing up. Goblins generally don't need it, though. But, I mean, for a fire drake brood, obviously, would be very useful. And then he goes to build a hearth. Indeed. Looks like Ingmar should be able to hold off there fairly well. Barrage going down on the Middle West Army. Absolutely demolishing it. Looks like all that remains is Boromir. He's going to get killed off. 
Looks like King Dane is having his way with him. Oh, he's going to get away, though. That's unfortunate. Brand is on the case, but he's a little too slow. Boromir needs to haul balls and get out of there. If Brand goes too deep, though, those right here, we're going to punish him. I think he might. There's the wounding arrow from Faramir. Uh-huh. <laughs> Might as well be shooting nerf darts. It's not that bad. <laughs> I, I talk a lot of shit about wounding arrow, but it's not as bad as I make it out to be. It's pretty bad, though. It doesn't need a buff. King Dane could be in some trouble. Ooh. That was not the best trample. Jordan Builder got punished. Immediately slaughtered. An unfortunate state of affairs for him. So we have a Menadale summon from the dwarves. So engineer will have a bit of fire support for a bit. There we go. The fire drake have healed up. Very nice. Definitely helps to have that hearse, see? And now he can use them to save his ally. Mod's army is looking pretty nice. He could do with a giant, I think. To help counter these rangers. So even spider riders. Spider riders probably be better, actually. Giants aren't bad either, though. He's probably going to need some giants to take down the fort. Maybe. Oh, God. Look at this. Karsh, you monster. I think Karsh died, though. Did he? Oh, he's still there. He's very much still there. That just shows how useless little goblins are against him. You really need half trolls to fight off a Karsh. Because they are tanky. They got the health pool to actually fight near Karsh. And they do good damage as well. But goblin warriors just die too quick to do anything. Tom Bowman getting a huge Sonic song there. Very nice. Killing off a lot of Menadale. A lot of them were summoned as well. If not all of them. Hobbit's being slaughtered by the thousands. Not really thousands. <laughs> I wish. It'd be a sight to see. We got a worm summon here on Bionicle's base. He's going to lose his archer range, unfortunately. Well, potentially. Should. Oh, he's uh, decided to change targets. I'm assuming uh, Mod did not want him to change targets. This is a very expensive and very crucial building to get rid of, and I don't, now the worm isn't actually going to finish. Oh shit, it actually had it just enough. Very nice. Well, that was a good play then. Oh, we do have our first giants that I've seen, at least, out on the field here. I believe it is the first giant, though. I haven't seen any others. And that will definitely help. As you see there, he's doing great damage. He's taking out farms from a distance. Definitely gives him an advantage. Giants can throw from very far away. Super, super useful unit. He's going to need more guys there to protect his giant, though. Very shortly. Looks like there was a white summon. Karch going in once again just to stand amongst these guys and they just die. God. So brutal. I love Karsh. But I hate fighting Karsh. My god. What level is that Karsh anyway? Does he have an assassinate ability yet? He gets that at level 8. He inflicts massive damage on a non-ended unit, which is pretty much anything other than a Nazgul. The Witch Kings, which is a Nazgul, of course. Or, uh... What? I know there's something else. Karsh? <laughs> Another Karsh? I guess. That's the only ones I can think of. We have three mountain giants out for Swiboy. As well as his uh, hordes of goblins. Of course, the hordes aren't going to do much. I'd almost say hordes of goblins aren't worth making when there's a crush around. Like, it's. It gets to the point of pointless. Oh shit, Angmar's actually using sorcerers now. Nice fell wind corpse rain, although there wasn't really anything to fell wind or corpse rain by the time he used it. As Karsh just kind of killed everything. <laughs> so, that's a thing. He'll be on the defensive for a bit now, Mod will. That will be ideal for him. The giants will definitely help with that though. 
King Dane trying to get away from Aragorn desperately while he's using Blade Master. Trying to get some more reinforcements there. Looks like dwarves do have dwarven riches. Very nice. Which is, of course, 25% Reese's. Reese's. He gets more Reese's from his mine shafts. They're tasty. Resources, that is. And, of course, we have the earthquake being purchased. We already saw that. We got six power points. Oh, shit, we got a Balrog. That's a deadly goblins. Yes, indeed. There he is. So, Swiboy will be playing with that. Looks like he summoned it under an army, so it killed a good amount of it. Which is always good. We do have an avalanche as well. I'd like to see where Angmar was going to use that one. I'll leave it on Angmar's camera for a little bit. We'll see where he casts down his uh, avalanche. He's probably trying to push as far as into the Dwarven base as he can to use said avalanche. Although, he could use it on the Goblin army as well. That's a big army. Look at that shit. Madness. Well, I hate observing players because then everything goes fog of war. He might use it on the Giants. He might have to use it on the Giants. If he doesn't get rid of those Giants, Angmar will lose his fort probably. As he does not have jack shit over here. Where is Wolfie's army? Well, I guess it's actually over here, isn't it? This could be bad. There's a Corp Train going down, though. It's going to take care of the Goblin Warriors, but not the Giants. Looks like a Snowbind has gone down in the Hole of King's Men, level 3. As he definitely wants to save that. Of course, if his fort starts getting attacked, though, that's going to be something he desperately want to save. Angmar's army has returned home, though. And he should be able to clean up all three of these Giants with ease. Karsh is level 8 now, so he'll be very effective against heroes from the dwarves. I don't think Angmar's even playing with heroes. Which is, uh, goblins, rather. That's what I meant. I haven't seen a single hero from Maud yet. I don't think. If I did, he probably died before I saw him. So, I don't think he did. I'd say Angmar's starting to get the upper hand a little bit. But not really. Because he hasn't really done much damage to uh, Mod's base anyway. As long as he keeps the pressure up on Wolfie, he should be fine, I think. And of course, he'll just continue getting power points. Both of them will. As you would expect. Looks like something happened in the Men of the West base that caused him to throw up a few towers. Did he use the avalanche? No? Not yet. Of course, he wouldn't use it on his ally, but who knows? I've actually seen somebody use Avalanche to destroy <laughs> their allies' fortress by accident. Or army, not with their fortress. I was in a cast a while ago. A long while ago, actually. God. Karsh just the hero of this match. So good in this matchup. Could go for Well of Souls. <laughs> Well of Souls is ten tends to not be used over Corpse Rain, because Corpse Rain is just so powerful. You could take out an army. Speaking of taking out an army, there's a lot of whites there. Clearly, somebody has taken out an army. So the blight was casted down there, and the army was destroyed, immediately turning them all to whites. Unfortunate for them. It's a Hard fought battle by both sides, though, definitely. It's a long game. Both sides having trouble defeating their opponents. Oh, the Undermine! This could be big. If the Men of the West don't come to Angmar's aid very, very quickly, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. He has summoned in the Junonine Rangers. Will that be enough, though, with all these dwarves here? Maybe. He managed to get one of those. Oh, the avalanche. That'll do it. Oh, there was a gore kill there, actually. There's your goblin hero. <laughs> Buried under 100 feet of snow. Looking to bet orc summon trying to deal with the giant. It's not the best way to deal with it, but it'll, it'll do something. Wolfie has taken a lot of damage, though. Hopefully he can save this temple twilight. Let's go up here. Looks like we have an attack. Angmar was on the offensive, of course, against the dwarves. And he is continuing to do so, in fact. 
looks like what we have over here is a lot of Menomdale, which seems to be enough of a deterrent. Angmar's going to need more forces up there if he's going to be successful in that campaign. Bormir's in the Horn of Gondor. Striking fear to his enemies. Oh, Ergrim's at level 6. Nice. Once he gets level 10, both breakers. It's going to be nasty. But who knows if he ever will. Level 10 is always hard to get to with level uh, Aragorn. Oh, look at that. Karsh absolutely wrecking King Dane. That's the power of the Whisper of Death. It's so good. It does a lot of damage. He was already wounded anyway, though, but still. There we go. Arrow volley or long shot, one of the two. Either one. Pretty nasty. Does Angler have arrow volley? It might have been arrow volley from uh, Bionicle. Who is pushing in on the goblins? So, boys, Fort has been earthquaked. And now he has a Bo uh, Boromir and Aragorn attacking. Aragorn's actually not attacking the fort, though. He needs to reposition his Aragorn if he wants to attack the fort. He might have got it if he was attacking the fort. Dwarves might have rebuild, though. Do they? We're actually observing him. Yes, they do. He should be alright. There goes the rebuild. And that should shut down the West's attack fairly well. Although that was damaging. Now the men of the Whiskers are going to try and get away. Looks like Boromir's going to stay. <laughs> oh, that was actually a pretty nice move. He's stopping, so the giants actually smash. Well, I don't know if he's doing it on purpose, but it's working. The giants are smashing their own guys that are chasing. There's a Gimli out in the field for Engineer. He's level 1 still, but still. Once he levels up, he'll be an absolute monster, as Gimli always is. We got a worm summon on engineer's base now. Not on his base, but to defend his base, I guess. Although he's kind of doing the opposite. While trying to defend his base, he just burned down his own mine shaft. So that's not a deal. But a worm's a worm. A worm's gonna worm, you know? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. We have snow trolls out from Angmar. Very nice. Looks like. He's starting to go into troll production. Hill trolls and snow trolls. Very nice. Hill trolls are very good. They do good damage and they are very tanky. And of course snow trolls pretty much the same. Good cavalry units. But these hill trolls will take care of these giants fairly well if they can get close. Not even good to bad orcs, which are swordsmen, can stand up to hill trolls very well. They kind of can. We got a fair amount of green over here, or turquoise, whatever color you want to call this. Bionicle seems to be doing alright over here. He's going for the mine shafts of the dwarves. Let's take a look at economies while we're here. Dwarves aren't actually rich or anything. There's about 700 resources. He's got 10 power points there. We almost have 2,000 for a uh, Bionicle. So he's sitting on a bit of cash. So boy is spending his money very frivolously, as the Swigmaster should. He's at 10 power points right now, and then we have well, we have summon giants ready to be used for Ingmar, and he's spending his money very quickly as well. So he's got a level three troll in Wolf Den. He's got a level two Temple Twilight right now. He's at two Hall of the King's Men's. He lost his level three one though. So that'll set him back a little bit. He can't build his archers or his uh, swordsman. Black and Ruins. Neither is level two, so can't do that. So we got a big attack here. Let's reposition myself. There we go. Very nice. Looks like that was an overwhelming victory for goblins. No Karsh is there. He's not relying too heavily on the Goblin Warriors. He is throwing a lot of them in there, though. When the Karsh is not there, being uh, averted by these half trolls, they do fairly well. It's just fodder units to do damage. The men of the West are possibly going for the kill here with the help of the summoned giants from Angmar. 
and comes undermined to knock them all about and do tons of damage actually to these archers. Holy crap. Built this whole battalion on almost death. Of course, it's not going to phase the giants. It's only delaying the inevitable. And down goes the fortress of engineer. Oh, that's too bad. That's not going to end well. And I think that's going to be GG. I don't think engineer is going to be able to recover from that. And I don't think Swig Boy is going to be able to survive alone. There's no dwarven builder over here either. Looks like he's going for an attack. In the middle of the west a little bit. It's a lot of goblin warriors. At least there's no cart on this side. Literally all he would need to stop a goblin warrior attack is boiling oil. That would do well. Boiling oil with a boring mirror near your fort to freeze them. <laughs> be pretty nasty. Of course, I don't think uh, buffed half trolls of darkness will be uh, killed by boiling oil, though. So if we brought those, it would be a different story. Oh, dwarves actually have an army. Oh, King Danes summoned it, I think. Indeed, he did. He gets his royal guard at level 8. King Danes is very close to death, but his fully upgraded army have defended what little he has left. Does he have a builder left? I don't think he does. It looks like Engineer has lost all his builders. And that is going to be very bad news for him. Looks like Angmar is expanding out here now. He's got another thing of sorcerers with Corp Rain ready. And now of course the men of the west can focus a little more on the goblin player. Now the dwarves are pretty much neutralized. All he has to do is outweight these uh, these guys. Once they despawn, what is he going to do? Oh no, the fell wind with the summon as well. King Dane might get killed here. Where is King Dane anyway? He's got to be in there somewhere. Ingmar has hill snow trolls as well. King Dane would never get away. I think he's dead. No, he's right there. And down falls the last king of the dwarves. Or his last king of the doors, at least. Cloud break being used to break the darkness. And freeze the top team, of course. Engineer has been defeated now. All his buildings are... Well, he's left the game. So all his buildings have gone to Swebboy. And I think it's only a matter of time here before that's GG. He's got a lot of stuff coming in. Well, at least he gets to end it with a bang. Summoning a Balrog there. Corpse Rain Blight. Ouch. <laughs> That's nasty. Nasty. Now he's demolishing all his buildings quickly. Well, majority of them at least. And that will be that. <laughs> I like how he's demolishing all the ones that don't matter. You gotta leave. Oh, you can actually demolish it while it's frozen. There you go. Swiboy has been defeated, and the bottom team takes the victory there. So, well played to Wolfie and Bionicle. That was pretty good. But both teams did very well, I'd say. So, I'd say well played to both teams, of course. But, congrats on the victory, I should say. Yeah, that was a good one. Pretty long cast. Pretty good cast, I'd hope. And I hope you guys enjoyed that as well. So I will see you guys in the next cast of the Rise of the Witch King patch 2.02. See you all next time.